everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing a 3D Zen Tangle, and I'm adding in some metallics, and we're going to have some fun with this. So right away, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my board, and I put down a background of scrap clay. So this is just in browns and stuff, and I'm measuring this out. This is like nine and three quarters by almost seven inches. So this is a fairly large tangle. I then decided to take another piece of scrap clay, and right here I'm using the chain link. So I went to that cane, I cut off slices, I put them all in a row, and then I'm going to run this thing through my pasta machine so it kind of kind of comes together with that scrap clay It's on the back. It will warp a little, that's what I kind of did. I thought, let's just play with it and see what I can do, right? And because I elongated it out, the nice thing was is I could place this either on the longer side or the shorter side of my prepped board. And I really decided, no, let's go with the longer side. I wanted to have that whole pattern just running the length of my board. Now, once I got that figured out as to, okay, I wanted to go the length of it, I decided to take that extra scrap clay and I just came in with my blade and I thought, let's just cut this free. So we have a nice, you know, section where we don't have any scrap kind of right there. I could leave it and use that as a part of, you know, building off of when it comes to this Zentangle, but I thought, no, let's just take it off, get rid of it. Okay, now that I have my chain link piece down, we're gonna go ahead and cut it flush with the, um, the edges of my scrap clay on the background there. And once I have that done, we're gonna come in and I'm gonna bring in some tin foil forms. We're gonna go ahead and wrap those, or I should say cover them in some clay. Give it a little bit of a dimension here. I'm using my white. And I also kinda of like to take my tin foil forms and when I've got them pre-made, kinda of place them down on my board. Try to you know, I, I like to give myself a little bit of a like, okay, this is where I might place this, this is where I might place that. And this way then it serves as a little bit of a guide for me. It's kind of like, um, you know, normally this is with Zentangling, you just go ahead and create, right? Well, even at the beginnings of Zentangling, you know, they'll tell you like, okay, just draw a line, a squiggly line, and you're gonna fill it all in. Well, this is kind of along that same lines. You're creating these forms, so it gives you an idea that this is gonna be a section, that's gonna be a section, and then you can build from there. Okay, so I'm bringing in the slices of one of my patterns for my houndstooth canes. And I'm just cutting slices. I'm gonna have this right go right down the middle. I've already made my teardrops. And again, it's just more of my patterns I'm bringing in that I can use. And I really, you know, most people would probably say, well, we could use this for jewelry. And I'm like, the, the first place my mind goes to is to put it into a picture piece like this because it's so much fun. <laughs> I mean, you could do some three-dimensional and we're going to do that here pretty soon, but I really like using some of these canes. And look at this, even in concert with that chain link, I have that one houndstooth piece and it's going right into that section because when I did stretch this out, I was like, okay, I don't like how that, you know, stretched out. <laughs> so I thought we have to go ahead and doctor this just a little bit. And 
I brought in this cane and I loved it. It was like, this was the added piece I needed. So now I'm also bringing in some gold clay and you know, I like to add in, and this is where I like to add in over the top of my scrap clay piece that's gonna be on the board. I like to add in other extra background clays. So if I can add in a gold or a silver or whatever, and because the frame of this picture piece was in golds, I went directly to gold. Sometimes that will happen. Let, um, if you have a, a frame and it's gonna be in gold or whatever, that's gonna dictate, you know, or color, it's going to dictate a little bit as to how maybe your picture might come about as well. You don't want it to conflict too much. So that's why I would say here, I use my gold metallic clay in because it has that frame. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a membrane art piece into our Zentangle. And if you're wondering, okay, you know, I show you how to do the membrane art right here, but if you wanna go, go back and check on my, um, especially my 3D Zentangle stuff, it should be in there. It's all in white and I've been meaning to do it in color, but I thought, eh, we'll just do it here. <laughs> do it here, get it done, right? Um, so I'm just doing, I'm creating a membrane membrane art. I think that's how you say it. I always fumble over that word. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to create this piece and it's going to go into my tangle. So enjoy watching me put this one together. Okay, here I'm bringing in a few of my circle Kemper cutters and I'm just cutting a bunch of little circles. I would say I rolled this out on a number three or four on my pasta machine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking these things and applying them into my picture. So just like on the top of those little tin foil forms where I had covered them, I'm just adding in a little bit of detail. I'm also gonna add this into a little bit of my membrane art area. And then we're gonna go ahead and create some line.
Okay, so as you can tell here, I'm rolling out a little bit of my white and my black. We're gonna go ahead and put these two pieces together. Make sure that they're both the same length and then we're gonna just twist them up into a nice little twist. And you know, I had enough here that I was able to cut this in half and then create two separate segments of it, which was really great because the one thing I was missing in the Zentangle and I had been struggling a little bit ahead of time, this is so important, create some line in your tangle. It's gonna help create sections for you to go ahead and build off of and put things down. Okay, so I flattened out this silver clay on a number three or four setting, I believe, or it might've been a number two. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just cutting um, some strips here. And the reason why is we're gonna go ahead and create another pattern I love to do using my ripple blade. And I thought, let's go ahead and use the smaller one. So I'm flipping it back and forth and back and forth and I'm giving a little bit of room in between each section. And this is just a wonderful little pattern I love creating using my ripple blade. Normally you use your ripple blade for other things, but this is one of those where I like, okay, let's add in this particular feature. So here I'm placing it back into my Zentangle and we'll just kind of create off of that as well. Okay, right here I'm bringing in my black and white bullseye cane, and I'm also going to be bringing in my Demi, my Chloe, and we're going to do a few of those little finger smears. I really like intermixing my three-dimensional Zentangle patterns with my Zentangle cane patterns. It's a nice way to use that combination, and this is where in these kinds of pictures they just shine. So as you could tell here, I'm bringing in some of that demi cane I had left over and that had been, you know, kind of reduced down. I'm also going to bring in a bigger one too, but I'm using that along with my knitting needle to go ahead and create more detail, more design, and just have fun with it.
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start creating some of those finger smears. And I really like to work in odd numbers, so I'm going to create three smears together in one little piece. And then we're going to go ahead and lift these up off of our table using our blade, and we'll place them into our picture. Now that I have my finger smears down, I decided let's go ahead and bring in one of my other canes that I had done, and that's my Chloe cane. So I decided, go ahead, cut a few of these slices, add this in, and even though I've got this mainly in this one corner, I, you know, I really like to make sure that my, um, my slices don't just stay in one place. So if I put some kind of pattern in, I like to make sure that it's somewhere else in my picture other than in just one place. This way then, it kind of relates back to the original placement and you could, you know, your eye travels a little bit better that way too. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bring in our demi cane, and you can tell right here I have not reduced this. This is a large cane, and I'm just going to cut a few slices and place this into my picture piece. Now, the reason why I have such a large cane here is because I like to have different sizes of my original canes. I don't like to have just all really, really small like demi canes. I like to have different sizes because this way then it gives me more options and there's more versatility to it. All right, so here we're just going to go ahead and keep filling in more and more on this picture. There's a lot of area to fill in, so I'm going to be creating a few of my little balls. I'll have some of that black and white bullseye cane, and I take that bullseye cane and I turn it into a bit of a teardrop form. It's easier to manage, easier to put down. Um, I also come back in with some of my Kemper cutters, and I'm going to be using the circle ones in particular. And we're going to do a little bit of where I'm cutting those slices out again, but we're going to be overlapping them just a little bit more and adding them in as some really fun and fantastic detail. I'm also going to use my knitting needle. I'll have a little fun with that, making more dots. So in this segment, I would just say enjoy, watch my hands talk, and I will get back with you at the very end of this little segment.
So as you can see, I've really filled in this picture piece a lot. And I filled it in a little bit with some of my demi, I had a demi cane, a pattern piece. I thought we're gonna cut some slices. I threw that in along with a lot of just dotting and a few extra tinfoil forms. But let's go ahead and move on. So we're going to go ahead and add in now the jewelry element, or I should say the metal pieces. And I had some extra, like, just circle chain. I love getting, <laughs> anytime I run across these, these necklaces or belts or whatever with the circles, you know, the little chain links that are complete circles, I'm like, yes, fun. <laughs> I take those home. I love them. And I'm using, this is a, like a piece of, a, actually it was an earring. And it was just only one. So I thought, okay, we'll use that in there. Another earring piece, threw that in. And then I had some other circles, just some other gold filigree pieces. Use whatever you have. I Now, mind you, I am using gold here. And again, it ties back into that frame. I think it really makes a difference. You could add other kinds of um, jewelry into it, but I really like to kind of keep it consistent here with my colors. All right, so last week I had done the belts in steampunk and I really, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> We're gonna add that feature in. I absolutely had to do this because, you know, the thing is with steampunk, you can, you can definitely put it into just a plain steampunk picture, okay? But who's to say you can't take those same elements that we find in steampunk and add them into the zentangling area? In fact, I think it's almost like they fit hand and glove together. And with polymer clay, it just makes it yay. So again, I'm bringing in my sponge here. <laughs> I did, I, I'm sorry, I get way too excited. <laughs> I brought in my sponge. I thought, let's go ahead and give it a little bit of that leather kind of effect, if you will. And I went ahead and made my stitching, keeping that all even and everything. And then I'm gonna bring in my chocolate brown kind of acrylic paint. And we're gonna paint up this, these pieces and then we're gonna start placing these into our picture. And just for a clarification here, this is a chocolate brown metallic paint um, made by Folk Art. So if you're wondering what paint I used, that's the one, go check that out at your local craft store.
At this point, I've gone and baked my picture entirely. And so I'm coming in here with a little bit of my silver paint, some silver metallic paint. And I used, I wanna say this was shimmering silver, um, also folk art paint. You can use whatever you have. If you have other metallic paint, use that. <laughs> Do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be particularly like this. I just wanted something that was gonna be really bright and that would set itself apart from the gold and the brown kind of metallic that I had down already. So right here, I'm just going in and all of my little belt buckles that I've placed in on my belt, I'm going through and painting each of them. Once I got all my painting done, I went back in and on each of the little metallic areas where I thought it could be problematic because, you know, it's been baked, it's inert. So I need to go back in with some super glue or use some kind of epoxy glue to make sure that some of these pieces will stay down and that they will not come off. Once I have that done, I also came in with some rhinestones. So any of the little indented areas that I used in creating with my knitting needles, I'm bringing in some pointed backed rhinestones and I'm just going to place them in wherever I see fit. And then from there, I brought in my blade and I kind of got underneath the picture piece itself. Some of it was glued down a little bit already, but I came back in with my super glue and just kind of put in a little bit around the edges on my picture, making sure the picture piece itself will adhere to the board. So this is the end result of creating my Zentangle in metallics. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.